Would you like to work closer to home, save money on gas, and be rewarded for your hard work and attendance? Then Belicio Foods is looking for you. That's right, Belicio Foods is now hiring for multiple positions and shifts with great employee benefits, an on-site health clinic, competitive wages, and advancement opportunities. Belicio Foods is a company that truly values their employees. Apply online at BelicioFoods.com slash careers. The Jackson County Fair Board, in conjunction with Total Media, proudly present Neil McCoy. Neil McCoy. Saturday, July 15th at the Jackson County Fair. VIP track access seats now available for only 30 bucks, which includes admission to the fair. Get tickets now at jacksoncoohfair.com or at the Total Media Studios in Jackson. Happy Monday, everyone, and welcome to the morning show right here on Main Street TV. Of course, Jennifer here to start off your work week Monday with our good friends. Well, two of them, Jeremiah and Pete, uh, stopped by. So that is wonderful. You guys must really be full of it today. Okay, well, double. We just we, we just come off of the 2023 Benton County Wild Turkey Festival, and I, I'm telling you what. Uh, I, I know it's a cliche, but it is true. It was truly one of the best. And that comes from the people that run it. And of course, you know, the Telegram has been covering it, you know, for years sure. as well. And this was a very special turkey festival for a, a number of reasons. Number one is something that nobody can control. And that, of course, is the weather. The weather. And yes. uh, it was it wasn't 100 percent, but it was about 90 percent. Because the only rain that came, uh, came, you know, over the night, Saturday into mm -hmm. Sunday morning, and it did cancel two of the events on uh, Sunday afternoon, two of the early events, uh, which was um, the uh, Kitty Tractor Pull and the Car Show. Okay. Uh, and some of the other Bummer. events, which were threatened because, because you know, the forecast was still kind of iffy. Uh, we're just pushed back a little bit and, okay. and they all happened. Oh, cool. And so, but for the rest of it, uh, you know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you're talking about premium weather. You know, you're talking about warm weather, sunshine, not too hot, uh, not a lot of wind or, or anything. So it was just fantastic. And, uh, the Turkey Festival committee had, uh, had planned a wonderful program. It's one thing to plan it, but the execution is another thing but it seemed to come off very well. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a chance to talk to Vinton County Wild Turkey Festival Committee President Bill Beckley mm -hmm. right near the end of things. And uh, we're going to have a, a sound bite that's going to be on the radio a little bit later on. You can hear what he what he says. Okay. But uh, his assessment, and he's a he's a pretty straight shooter, was, uh, was very positive. Uh, they were pleased with the participation. They were pleased with the attendance. And the thing that he personally liked the best was the quality of the entertainment. They had musical entertainment, starting with a karaoke contest on Thursday evening. They had two groups on uh, on Friday night, yes, and then more uh, more uh, entertainment on Saturday, including you know, of course, the featured entertainment, Jess Kelly Adams, mm -hmm. Blue Diggity, the bluegrass group in the mm -hmm. afternoon. And then Sunday, and I had a chance to hear them, the Gospel Harmony Boys. Oh, cool. And, you know, they did. Yeah. Now, because of the circumstances, the weather and like that, uh, uh, there wasn't a huge crowd for the Gospel Harmony Boys. But let me tell you what, they were worth listening to. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I so was, talented. I was in the booth part of the time, but they were right around the corner. I came around to listen and watch part of their concert, and they just did a fantastic job. Uh, but the Wild Turkey Festival, uh, you know, this is going to go down in the books. There's been 38 of them. This is going to go down in the books as one of the very best. And that is the honest, honest truth. Love it. We're going to have, uh, we've already done a lot of coverage. We've had uh, things on the website, a lot on social media, a lot on Facebook. We've had, uh, we did multiple videos from up there. All that is on our Facebook page. Yes. Uh, that you can see, kind of review some of the things you missed if you weren't there or go back and revisit if you were there. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to have a ton of coverage going in our Wednesday paper. Uh, we'll have uh, some picture pages. We'll have a big wrap-up story that will tell you uh, about the main news of the event and how it came uh, about. 
how it, how it, how it, how it rolled out. Um, some comments, of course, from Mr. Beckley uh, mixed up in there mm-hmm. as well. But uh, it was a special festival for us here at Total Media it as was. well. Because they made Total Media, as most folks now, the Grand Marshal of, of, of their Turkey Festival through 2023. Wasn't that cool? What a tremendous honor Absolutely. that was. And, and they treated us like royalty. They were very, they did. They were, they've been so nice going into the festival and throughout the festival. And uh, we appreciate them very much. And, you know, we, it's just a wonderful honor that they gave us. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had uh, a spot of honor in the parade. Uh, as a matter of fact, we were the first unit after, after uh, the flags. Uh, now that's saying something. It was. We were, we were ahead of the Queens even. Whoa. You know, wondered, wondered how that happened. But, but we were. It was wonderful. This is uh, one of the video of the, of the, of the parade going on. Hey, yeah. there's the jambulance. Yeah, that, that is us going by. The the jambulance was there. I believe that uh, JJ Hill might have been uh, at the wheel. He was. And okay, and this is uh, this is the group coming through. We had probably there's Todd Compton there on the end. You can see him. We had there's Pete Wilson right there. Okay, in the blue shirt. We probably <laughs> we probably had about 20, 25 uh, nice. 20 employees and family members coming through there. So it was excellent representation for uh, for Total Media. And uh, once again, we were special guests at the Queen's Luncheon that they had. That is a closed event. You know, it's mostly royalty, Absolutely, yeah. royalty that is there. And uh, we were also uh, we also uh, participated in some other events. Uh, we were considered one of the sponsors of the Queen's Luncheon. Uh, of course, we were special guests at the pageant, uh, the pageant before the festival, two weeks before the festival on April the 22nd. So we are very grateful for the recognition that they gave us. And uh, uh, all the coverage that we have, will uh, a lot of the coverage that we have, post coverage, will be coming at you in Wednesday paper. Lots of pictures and coverage. And as I said, a lot can already be seen on the videos. Uh, it kind of makes you feel like you were there. A lot of the concerts we had videos from, of course, Jeremiah Shaver uh, was there uh, doing one of his specialties, which is Facebook Live of, right. of the Prey, the Queen's Crowning. So, uh, so much there. Uh, Jeremiah is now going to uh, talk a little bit about the Queen's crowning. He was there for that. And uh, I'm, I'm telling you, How they, exciting. They, they, they do it upright on the announcements. They make you wait a little bit, but they have they have the girls from last year. They make sure that they're in the... Ah, oh, my, there, there he you is. Are. <laughs> that's oh, that's what I was waiting for the parade to come through. <laughs> I was letting people know I was going to be live. That, that's, that, that's right. We would have had good. one more person in our walking units. Yeah. <laughs> But Jeremiah, it's hard to film and walk in the parade Jer- Jer- at the same Jeremiah time. Jeremiah had to work and obviously did a great job doing what he does. And, you know, <laughs> once again, that is on, on Facebook. But uh, Jeremiah covered what is always one of the big highlight events of the Turkey Festival, and that was the announcement. Because it's not only the crowning, it is the announcement. And they do something that most of the other festivals don't do. They have some special awards. Yeah, I think uh, that's so a, cool. A handful. And yeah. Jeremiah is going to go over all of them. And each of these awards include some scholarship money or mm-hmm. cash money that can be used for scholarships. Yes, and that's so a big deal. I mean, you're talking the Turkey Festival. You know, it's hard to make these festivals go from a business point of view because you know they, it costs to put them on, and you've got to pay for entertainment and all like this. I will give the Wild Turkey Festival credit; they pump a lot of money into the kids, <clears throat> into these queen candidates, uh, and you know, even some of the ones who are not the queen or attendants. They're walking away with not only Absolutely. recognition and one of uh, memories that will last a lifetime, but they're walking away with some scholarship money, and I'm sure it will experience that will help them uh, in their for in, sure in their in their in their lives ahead. But anyway, Jeremiah, if you could, uh, you know, for those who don't know, tell us who the 2023 Ooh, Vinton County Wild Turkey we're Festival spill Queen is, the tea. And, and and we'll yes, and we'll have some photos, accompanying photos to put uh, to put. Uh, some pictures with those names. Okay. So as, so as uh, Pete said, after the grand parade and before the uh, headline entertainment on Saturday, which was Jess Kelly Adams, uh-huh. they uh, crowned three new members for the Benton County Wild Turkey Festival. Lily Young was crowned queen. Emma Lehman was crowned first runner-up. And Eliza Smith was crowned second runner-up. 
And here are the young ladies in the center there is Lily. Next to her on the left is Emma. And to the um, to her right, that would be um, Miss Smith there, Eliza. Very so that good. is your 2023 Benton County Wild Turkey Festival Royalty. Lily was just so thrilled and excited. Like I'll she was bet. in tears <laughs> when she in um if you watch back, I, I did a live stream of the crowning for this um event here for the uh for the Miss for the Benton County Wild Turkey Festival Royalty. And um during this they uh they have one of the awards. It's called Best Gobbler. Mm -hmm. And uh, Lily actually got that award. Oh. And you, if you watch back the video, you can watch back the part of her doing her uh, best gobble. There, there, there is Lily at the moment that her name was announced. Aww. Yeah, she was just, she was. In How tears. exciting. Just excited. So a little more on the um, awards and scholarships that they gave out. Um, as I said, the best gobbler award, community spirit award and fun outfit award went to Lily Young. Spirit of the Wild Turkey Festival Award and Best Essay Award went to Emma Lehman. Uh, the Interview Award and Evening Gown Award went to Eliza Smith. And then you had the People's Choice Award, which went to Cassie Peoples. So Peoples won the People's Choice. <laughs> and then <laughs> um, the Cocktail Dress Award went to uh, Bailey Wellman. And then you also had um, Brooklyn Burns, and she won the Miss Congeniality Award. Cool. And then I, they, I don't think they gave this award away last year, or I don't remember them giving this away. Maybe they've given it away in the past, but they gave away an award this year called the Queen of Queens Award. And it was given to the 2009 Wild Turkey Festival Queen, Laura Bishop. Okay. And Bishop has been, you know, since being royalty in the past she is still involved i guess in the festival and contributes in different ways every year since she has been involved cool so that's a little uh, rundown of the royalty from saturday how exciting all right and and uh, we do want to mention this uh dylan we'll do some photos now if you can find them there and we know we threw a lot at you from the queen's luncheon the queen's luncheon as i said is uh by invitation only they had it at central elementary school the room was full mm -hmm. 32 no 33 royalty groups from around ohio Whoa, mostly in lot. the region but i think somebody came from as, as far away as bucyrus wow so uh you know the bratwurst a Festival. lot of royalty here we don't want to uh, forget them this is the 2022 wild turkey tur yes two wild turkey festival queens who reigned through Saturday mm -hmm. until the new royalty was crowned, and they were very prominent uh, throughout. On the left, you have uh, the first attendant, Ella Clancy, in the middle. You have, of course, Queen Lake and Williams. And uh, on the right there, you have second attendant, Bailey Williams. Mm -hmm. And yes, they are related. Yes, I understand. they're cousins. I understand they're cousins. Yep. And a special word that we want to say about Miss Lake in there in the middle. She is a candidate for Miss Ohio Team USA. That's right. Which uh, that pageant, I understand, will be, I guess, two weeks from last Saturday. Mm -hmm. And uh, they do a uh, they do a online contest where you can actually become a finalist or a semifinalist if you get the most votes online. Uh huh. And so we're going to have a link uh, to that from our Facebook page from the Facebook. From another Facebook page. We'll also be publicizing that in the paper because we want to do everything we can to help Miss Lakin win that. Yes, absolutely. To. Support our local girls. Right. So anyway, we'll certainly be following that as well. But one of the most enjoyable things at that uh, festival, and it has nothing directly to do with wild turkeys or anything, but it was so enjoyable. Uh, I was among those who attended the Queen's Luncheon. Mm -hmm. as, as I said, they treated us like royalty. We were at one of the head tables there. Nice. Uh, several of us attended, about six or seven of us, and had a five-course meal there. It was really something, really impressed with how the festival committee put everything together. It's not a big group, but man, they went to a lot of work to make this happen. But one of the things they did, in addition to what you would expect, you know, the meal, introduction of everybody, um, the Queens, uh, the royalty for 2022 gave their farewell speeches. Mm -hmm. They had entertainment. I guess you could call it entertainment. <laughs> it was a hypnotist yes. named Mike Bishop. Have you ever seen him at work? <laughs> no, but I've heard lots and lots of stories. Well, I tell you what it is. Uh, okay. I've been around a while. You know that you don't have to give me, you don't have to throw out my age or anything. I've been around a while. It's one of the most entertaining 
presentations I've ever seen. Like, and do you believe it? Is it really true? There was about 30 <laughs> girls, minimum 30 girls that went up on the stage to be volunteers, to be hypnotized. Yes. Almost everybody was. And he said, it's not a black magic or anything. It's just the power of suggestion and then listening to their votes and you're letting yourself basically slip <laughs> off to sleep. Uh, that is Queen in the middle. That is Apple Festival Queen, Abby Plants. On the right is the second attendant, Deanna Houston. And as you can see, and another young lady who I don't know from another town, you can see that they are asleep. <laughs> uh, also, um, Dylan, if you could put it up, there's an, uh, we also want to have one of the Jackson County Fair Queen and first attendant kind of in a, in a similar pose there. <laughs> on, the le- <laughs> on the left is Queen Jenna Lewis. On the right is first attendant Olivia Moore and another young lady from another town. Uh, and you can see they're very much asleep. Jenna was especially out, I'll, I'll tell you. But here's the thing. Not only did he put them asleep, and you know that this isn't rigged. Not only did he put them to sleep, but, you know, through the power of suggestion, uh, and that's what he says it is, you know, okay. it's just your willingness to do it. Once you go into sleep, I think he could have you do anything. And you don't have That's kind of scary, you, isn't it? You, you don't necessarily have your free will anymore. But he had people forget their name. He, they, he had people thinking their name was something else. He had people (laughs) thinking that the person next to him was poking them when they weren't. And the person (laughs) poking them, thinking it was so funny that the other person was mad that they were laughing hysterically. (laughs) He had people who forgot when they counted their 10 fingers, seven, the number seven. So they counted to 11. They skipped seven. He had another person who could say the the first syllable of seven, but not the second syllable of seven. (laughs) So... I mean, he and it was an abbreviated show because you know there it was it was such a long show anyway. But it was uh, it was absolutely amazing. That's and, awesome. And I, I tell you what, it made me think. It, it made me think that there's nothing hokey about hypnosis. You know, I always wondered uh, yeah, about that. You do. There's nothing hokey about hypnosis, and you saw that it wasn't just you know a certain state of mind or a certain person can be hypnotized because up there on the stage. If there were 30 girls up there, 28 of them went under hypnosis. You know, you have to be willing. You have to listen to them. But basically, it's just a few things. You're going to go to sleep, sleep, sleep. And then he would do this noise. <laughs> and every time, every time that he did that, I mean, if they, if they said stand up and clap, they would stand up and clap. And, 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 they, and they could wake up and have, and have their eyes open, but still be in a state of hypnosis. That is so crazy. But it was, uh, I just had to, I guess that Mike has been at the uh, Turkey Festival Queens pageant before, and they've yes. already booked him for next year, because I know for those girls, it was a, a, a memorable thing. He had a girl... He had a girl thinking that they were getting a call from their favorite celebrity and the call came in on their shoe. So they took their shoe off. (laughs) They took their shoe off to talk to Taylor Swift, for instance. And then he had them get mad when Taylor hung up on him. Says, Taylor hung up on me. I'm so mad at her. (laughs) So, you know, he told them to be angry about it. And by golly, they were angry. So that is hilarious. I tell you what, if we can get Mike, of course, we probably couldn't afford him. Get him on Main Street TV. <laughs> that, oh, my God! That, that would be quite a show. I want to see him put you to sleep <laughs> and see see what you do. <laughs> that would be awesome. But but anyway, uh, it just uh, the parade was about half an hour long. Uh, it was very good as well. Uh, you know, you, we saw a little bit of video from the parade there. Afterwards, uh, Jess Kelly Adams had a big crowd. There was there was a huge crowd. Good. Uh, at the uh, in front of the uh, main stage, uh, there's Jess Kelly Adams performing. Red Thompson Jr. was there to get a video of that and also take some still photos. But if you look back from the main stage, huh. and, and I think he did, yes, yes. When I look back from the main stage, or anybody look back from the main stage, I mean it was packed down that. Oh, down wow. That. Look, look Holy at that right moly. there. Yeah. I mean, there isn't any room in there. Of course, it was festival seating. People brought their own chairs. They were standing along the sides Love and so that. forth. But that's how we know that it was uh, successful because of, of all the people that came out on Saturday. And I suppose a combination, a hometown combination of people wanting to see about the Queens contest. Sure. And also, secondly, of course, uh, if not also primarily uh, the Jess Kelly Adams uh, concert. Yep. So, uh, all, all, all the way around, just uh, a great wild turkey festival. 
As we said, a lot of coverage coming in Wednesday's paper. Uh, a lot of people on the staff uh, did a lot of work to make that happen. I appreciate all them. And the ones who uh, weren't there and didn't do that much there, they were doing other things to make it all possible. That's a lot of, right. A lot of people uh, pitched in. It was, uh, as I said, great for us because, you know, they made us the Grand Marshals. But uh, for the Wild Turkey Festival, can't say enough about that committee. Bill says, you know, they could use more people. Mm -hmm. So if you appreciated what they did with this festival, sure. and, and this was the first time that I'd been up there for multiple days, I came away very impressed. And I can honestly say that with, with their planning, their organization, their execution. Absolutely. And I got to eat fried cheese. Oh, did you? Well, I went down. I went I, down and the, noodles. I went down the line. I was so happy. I went down the line, and I and uh, Pam Wilson had supper ready for me, so I wasn't allowed to, oh. to have any festival food. But I'm telling you, I could have picked up ten different oh, things. Oh my gosh! Did you know that they had the Smith sausage truck there? Yes, I introduced uh, James to the to a Bahama Mama. Oh my! If you haven't, I think he liked it. If you haven't been to to the to Smith's restaurant there in German oh, Village, oh, it's my so goodness. good. Cream puffs. Oh. Cheese, fried cheese curds. Yeah. And, and I think that wagon had 20 different ways to uh, fried food. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. It's a, that's a good one for sure. Right. Might not be best for the blood pressure and the cholesterol, but you know, I mean, it's the you festival. Know, it's, it's a festival. It's the festival. All right. Well, uh, while Jeremiah is still here, we're going to do one other thing. And then. The we, yes. we skipped Sunday of the festival. We didn't go over Little Miss. And the oh, yes, I'm sorry. We had more royalty on Sunday. So yes. Jeremiah, That's right. Tell, Jeremiah tell, covered you're gonna, that. You're going to have to help me with the name again because I already forgot. All right. It's Vivian Timmons. Vivian, okay. Vivian Timmons. All right. So so on Sunday, we had some rain, Jen, in the morning. We did. Thunderstorms rolled through. Rough. So everything uh, for the Little Miss uh crowning was supposed to take place at 1130. They ended up pushing it back an hour and a half. So it started okay. at 1 o'clock. Okay. When I got up there, um, I got up there about 12, 1230. Um, it was overcast, wasn't raining, mm -hmm. sun was trying to peek through. It turned out to be a nice day the rest of the day for the festival and for the crownings that happened uh, Sunday afternoon. So, so cute. They crowned uh, the Little Miss in court, and that took place there on the main stage. And it was Vivian Timmons was named Little Miss and then you had Natalie Reynolds was crowned first runner up and Elizabeth Horn was crowned second runner up. And they also give out some awards for these as well. Um, Timmons was awarded the Community Spirit Award. Reynolds was awarded the People's Choice Award and Horn was awarded the Miss Congeniality Award. Very good. And then following immediately following the crowning for the Little okay. Miss and uh, you have them on stage. Um, in the center is um, Miss Timmons, and to the left that would be Miss Reynolds, and to the right is Miss Horn. So there they are posing for a picture. Immediately following this photo, I had to run back to the stage because they started the other part of the royalty contest, which is the Miss Little Gobblerette and Mister Gobbler. Okay. <laughs> so I made it back over in time to get this photo on the stage and you have there that is audrey Plummer. she was crowned the little miss gobblerette <laughs> and next to her that is trevor howdy shell and he was named little mr gobbler <laughs> and the way that they do this contest it's been a that's a long-standing part of mm -hmm. the uh contest dating back to 1992 um it is based on penny votes that is collected prior to the uh -huh. festival and uh, fun fact, um, Little Mister this year, Trevor, his father, Troy, was the first ever Little Mister oh, Gobbler so in 1992. So that was kind of uh, fun awesome. how that come full circle there. So um, there's a rundown of the royalty for Sunday. Very right. I just want to make sure we mention those. Since yeah, I love that. Them. Right. And, and Troy, of course, lives in Benton County. He is in a practicing attorney there. Mm -hmm. And he is the uh, village solicitor or law director there for the village of MacArthur. Okay. So we, we know him that way as well. But we didn't know that he had that on his resume. That he no, was we did the not. very first little Mr. Gobbler. All right. And That's then uh, And then... Uh, one other thing that happened on, on Sunday, uh, we'll close with this. Uh, the very last event was the Gospel Harmony Boys. Yes. And Dylan, if you have that photo, you can throw it up there. There they are. Now, they go back to the 1960s, I think. And these aren't the original no, Gospel Harmony so. Boys. But, but some of them, they, they kind of inherited those positions and they carried on their tradition. 
and they had great, great harmony. I love the barbershop oh, yes. type harmony, and that's what it is, a quartet with different parts, and uh, they just did a, a, a great job. It's uh, a good picture, Pete. To, yeah, for the folks that were there. Well, they got into it. And, yeah. And we have a, uh, I think we have a video there on Facebook of, of, one, of, their, of one of their songs. So anyway, cool. that's a wrap on the Vinton County Wild Turkey Festival. Remember, some of these things that you saw here on Main Street TV will have uh, in our print edition and much more after that. Uh, now, Jeremiah, see, the, here's the thing about the Wild Turkey Festival. As much as we tried to do there and they deserved it, there's a whole bunch else going on right now, too, that needs covered. And <laughs> right. The, well, and, you know, we're, we're all panting a little bit right now. But one of the things that Jeremiah did uh, earlier in the week was the Jackson High School Arts Festival. Mm -hmm. And he's going to tell us just a little bit about that. Sure. Um, so the Jackson High School Arts Festival sported a Stranger Things theme this year. So they had really? a bunch of um, cool. like banners and posters for Stranger Things. The, uh, they, they had cornhole. Uh, for folks to do, and the um, cornhole boards had were painted with a Stranger Things theme. <laughs> Love for that. those that don't know, that is a TV drama on Netflix. Yes, that's been on for I don't shame know, you number, if you haven't watched it. Number of years, and uh, so that was kind of the theme for that. Um, I don't know if there was necessarily any art, maybe based on that, there could have been some. Um, the art festival was held over the course of two days, May 4th and 5th, in the Jackson High School Fieldhouse. And there was almost 400 pieces of artwork on display this year. And they had cornhole and Italian ice. And um, the Jackson High School art teacher, Sean Gentry, was very proud of the wide variety of artwork for this year's festival. Mm -hmm. Um, this year, the title of Best of Show went to, uh, we, we Pete just talked about her, Jenna Lewis. Um, okay, she yeah. She is uh, fair royalty. She was awake when she did the art. <laughs> she was, yeah, that's yeah. good. So she, well, I don't know, maybe she was under maybe hypnosis. Maybe she was under hypnosis. Yeah, That'd so be the only way I could do art. It, it worked. <laughs> this, is her, this is her piece of art. Um that she won best of show with. And Jenna Lewis is a 12th grader at Jackson High School who is in Gentry's Art 3 class, and she received this honor. She not only won best of show, but first place with this cryptid art. Um, a little bit about this, Gentry um, told me that her artwork was a part of a collaborative project between the middle school and the high school art students. The middle school art students um, came up with an original cryptid design then the high school art students elaborated artistically on the seventh grade students' ideas in various ways. And um, so Lewis's art was based on seventh grader Candace Griffith's original crypt design, which you see there on the left. And Herpes art work is the one there on the right. How cool. So um, we do have, uh, when, this, when the, we get the story online, we will have a photo gallery along with um, some photos uh, of the ribbon winners. And mm -hmm. um, we did a group photo with Mr. Gentry and uh, a lot of the ribbon winners from That's this so year's cool. festival. Um, unfortunately, Miss Lewis was not there on Friday when I went by. It was senior skip day. So she was <laughs> right. out having fun. <laughs> Or doing I what she should be doing. Yeah, right? or I would have uh, gotten a picture of her with her piece. Um, I did find out that they do a People's Choice Award as well. And uh, Ethan Hicks won People's Choice. Very cool. And uh, they explained to me that that's based on votes that, they, that the students received. I mm -hmm. guess he received the most votes. And it may not be um, for like a certain piece of art that was voted on. Okay. So that's a little bit about this year's... Um, Arts Festival. Well, I know, James, uh, or were you going to talk about oh, it? Oh, well, you said that you were up there and it was crazy. Yeah, good. I, I, I got to help judge the art show and it was crazy. <laughs> um, but what I was I was going to interrupt you guys. We have some surprise guests in coming in. The, what? Right now. Guys, you want to come on in? Pete, these people wanted to come in and talk to you this morning. So we've got a big group. He looks scared. All right. <laughs> so we've got a big group of guys coming in here now. They wanted to come talk to Pete. Uh, Jeremiah, do you care to give uh, Wilbur your chair over there next to Pete? Very good. Well, look at all these people. We got Hi, all kinds everybody. Of guests. Come on in. Oh, my. Oh, wow. This is, you got the whole uh, gang. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll grab some more chairs here in a second. 
How many more chairs do we need? Oh, happy birthday, Mark. <laughs> hey, everybody. <laughs> All right. Well, there's a whole lot of people here in the studio, and Wilbur McCormick is here. So what's going on, buddy? Yeah, what is going on? <laughs> yeah. Wonder, I wonder, you know. No, no. They said if we came in and we all smiled, nobody knew what we was up to. Well, that that's probably, that, a, that's, that's what that's, I do every day. probably the way it works, <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, this is a group. We, we got together here a while back and formed a, a chapter of Kentucky Colonels in southeastern Ohio. Okay. And uh, as we were meeting, one of the people brought up the point that we had a guy among us that was not a commissioned Kentucky colonel. And we thought that that probably should be taken care of. Okay. So uh, I think, Bob, do you have a... Yeah. Let me have it here because I, I can't... <gasps> I have to read. I have a, a, a certificate here. And I, it reads in part from uh, the Commonwealth of Kentucky, Andy Bashir, uh, governor, to all whom these presents shall uh, come greetings. Know ye that Honorable Marvin Jacob Wilson is commissioned a Kentucky colonel. I hereby confer the, this honor with all of the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereto. Oh, my goodness. Woo, Pete! Congrats! Wow, look, look, look at this. Isn't look that, at you! Isn't that a nice frame thing? I, I tell you what, I've had some nice things happen to me, but I never thought I would ever be a Kentucky colonel. Well, now you, know, you are. Let, let me tell you, it, you, you see Wilbur sitting next to me, but there's some other gentlemen in this room that are top-notch Jackson Countyans. That's right. And, and that is that is certainly a commonality among who is a Kentucky colonel, and to be included in that group, I mean, it is truly an honor. There's John Smith over there. There's Paul Haller. And help me with your name. Bobby, Bobby. Daniels. <laughs> okay. And then, and, okay. And then there's uh, Deanna Stroff. There is George Kitchen. There is Roy Vaughn. Roy Vaughn. Mark Wood, the famous Mark Wood, and the famous historian Bob Irvin. And I know that there are others, too, that, yes. are, that are in this great fraternity. That's right. And uh, I, I tell you what, top-notch top-notch people and uh i am i am truly honored and you blow me away you didn't tell me you were going to do this no uh your wife told told you that uh uh i wanted your name and stuff so i could put you on the christmas list okay all right well, <laughs> well uh, she's I, sneaky well I, I knew that you did that and i i, I didn't I didn't suspect a thing. So you, pu you, you pulled one over on me. And for all these folks to come out and take some time out of their day for this, I truly appreciate all of you. Well, well-deserved, Pete. Thank you very much. Wow. Very well-deserved. And we also want to invite you to become a member of the uh, Southeastern Ohio Kentucky Colonels. I will certainly do uh, that. It's, um, there's a quick explanation. When you are commissioned a Kentucky colonel, you are commissioned by the governor of the state of Kentucky. Mm -hmm. uh, going way back, they used to even be in uniform and serve as a guard for the governor. Uh, today, when you're commissioned a Kentucky colonel by the governor, you are a Kentucky colonel for life. You can elect on your own to become a member of the Honorable Order of Kentucky Colonels, which is the benevolent side of uh, the organization that does charitable uh, uh, activities and, and helps in the in local communities as well as, and a lot of them are outside of Kentucky. And you also join in with some very notables. Probably one of the last that passed away was Queen Elizabeth II, was a wow. Kentucky colonel. Okay. And we've had hey, several Hey, that's presidents. some good company, Pete. <laughs> we've had too, too several, good a company for me. Yeah, we've had several presidents. We've had quite a few actors and actresses and, uh, so we welcome you. Thank you so much, Wilbur. We hope that uh, Thank you, you have a long term as a concern. Okay. Well, I, once again, I am so honored and yeah, for you to do this on Main Street TV and you didn't tell me. I would put a tie on or something for you. <laughs> so, And I don't do ties very often. Yeah.
Well, we do want to get a picture before, okay. before we get out of here. Well, I'm, I'm sure we can do that. So, so, so all right. Well, and thank you so much for letting us have the chance to do this on TV. It's I, our pleasure. Always good to see you, Wilbur, and everyone here in the room. And, of course, can't think of a better guy for the for the honor. Th thank you very much, very Jennifer. That's very kind of you. And now we know he's real name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what's up, Marvin? Uh, okay. Uh, this Where did a... Pete come from? Uh, yeah, okay. that I've been wondering ever since. Because okay. there's, <laughs> there's a Marvin and there's a Jacob, but there's no Pete in All there. Right. So okay. where did Pete come from? Yeah, well, but there's a, that came, it, it goes back farther than that, uh, Mark. Uh, my sister is two and a half years older than I am, and she was starting to speak when I was born. Okay. And she didn't want to say Marvin. She said Pete. Nobody knows why, but that's what she said. <laughs> and that is, hey. what, that is what it has become. And we have a very good relationship, me and my sister, but that is the best thing she's ever done for me. <laughs> so, Love that. I had no, I'd never heard that story. And how many years did that stick? It has stuck uh, for uh, oh, 68 or so. A few years. Yeah. yeah. Wilbur, a, a few many, years. Many, <laughs> many years. Yeah. Well, <laughs> what a fun story! I did not know about that. Right. Well, that is that is the truth. Now, if you can, uh, it, it, this isn't on TV, is it? What we're doing? Yeah. Pete. Okay. So we're, now everybody knows. Now Marvin. everybody knows Marvin Jacob. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, would my Kentucky Colonel friends please continue to call me Pete? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you want to check out uh, the Kentucky Colonels have a uh, Southern Eye have a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. Okay. And there's a, there's a post scheduled to go on it in about uh, 20 minutes. Uh, Very so. good. Yeah. Thank you, Wilbur, and You're, everybody for, for being here today. It's always good to see all of you. Okay, well, very it's good. good uh, yeah. Uh, we've got a couple other people we had planned coming on TV anyway, <laughs> so we'll let them come in, and uh, if there's time, I may wrap up. Or... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Pete, why don't you come? Let's come take some pictures, and Jeremiah will take your spot. Maybe we'll go grab Phil. Okay. Yes, yeah, I think absolutely. Phil, I, think, I think Phil is ready and has something a little later if we could slip him in. All right. Such a, such good company to be in this morning. Thank you all for, for coming in. Come back over, Jeremiah. Thank you, Wilbur. Thank you all. It's great to see you. <laughs> he brought the whole he brought the whole organization. All right. Well, so I know a lot of you are wondering about the weather and it has changed a little bit um, from the on Friday when we gave the forecast. The rain has actually moved out a little bit, which is cool. Um, today looking like an absolute gorgeous day with highs of 77, some partly cloudy skies. Tomorrow on Tuesday, a little bit cooler, a little tiny chance of rain there in the forecast, 20%, highs of 73, lows of 47. Then on Wednesday, look at that, absolutely gorgeous, with some sunshine, highs of 77, and lows of 49. And then we get into the 80s over the weekend, so <clears throat> we'll take it. What's up, Dylan? Huh? Yes, let's go ahead and, um, yeah, we're a little bit out of out of kilter today, but let's hear from our friends at Vinton County Bank, and then we'll be back. At Vinton County National Bank, we believe in supporting the areas where we live and work. Now, we'd like to honor those who also serve our communities. Our new Community Champions account is especially for first responders, veterans, active military, and anyone employed in the fields of healthcare or education. This account offers rewards, discounts, and other benefits to those who give so much to others. Vinton County National Bank, rewarding those who serve. All right, well, um, so our new Kentucky Colonel, Pete Wilson, uh, Marvin Jacob, if for those of you that did not know, um, took all of the news stories with him when he left. So Jeremiah ran down the hall to see what he can he could grab. But you know, I was um, I was looking, and and Pete's wife Pam is here in the studio. We didn't put her on because she's a little camera shy. But I was reading some of um, an, a, a, a biography that um, was written for Pete, and I thought it was really interesting. Um, he attended both Kennison and Parkview elementary schools, uh, then went to Jackson high school, graduated in 1973. But I was, I was reading down some of the, um, 
the great things that Pete has accomplished. Of course, all of his Telegram awards uh, are amazing. But did you know that, that Dan, Dan, and Pete were the grand marshals of the Jackson County Apple Festival a I, few years ago? I did know that, Jen. Uh, somehow I missed that. I don't know what I was thinking. Yeah, it's been um, it's been a been a few. Does it say what year? Yeah, let me see. I I remember looking through, and I I think it was last year, and I told Pete. I said, No, it doesn't say. I said I didn't realize that um, you guys were grand marshals. He goes, yeah. Yes, they had the tr- the, the trio. Because of where we did the sports. Dan, Dan, and Pete. Yeah, Dan, Dan, and Pete as the Grand Marshals. So we're going to have Alex come in, and he's going to come on over and uh, talk about some stuff that he's covered recently. That's couldn't, cool. Couldn't find Phil. He's wandered off, but we'll get him in we'll here see before if we the can end of the show. Him. Yeah, he, he tries to be camera shy, too. We just don't let him. But um, some other things that Pete has done before we get back to the news um, was the try um, Grand Marshals. Um, he has received the district board of the Ohio high school athletic association, the president's award and Pat- Patricia Howell community service award, both from Jackson County unit of the American cancer society, the community pride award, uh, and the co entrepreneur of the year award, which was a telegram honor, uh, both from the Jackson area chamber of commerce. Um, and of course, Wilson, uh, Pete and his wife, Pam, uh, who is his best friend and soulmate, have been married for almost 41 years. Can you believe that? Uh, and they currently have two cats, Lily and Mickey, who are coddled like children. However, measures have been taken to ensure that there are no grandkitties. <laughs> that was written. <laughs> that <laughs> is written. Right. Well, congratulations so to good. Pete on that honor yeah, of becoming no, that, a Kentucky a, Colonel. Yeah, and what an uh, amazing I honor. had no, I had no idea. <laughs> well, you know, we only tell certain Surprise. people so that it doesn't get blabbed all around the uh, office. Right. Right. Which means we don't trust you enough yeah. to tell you. Don't trust the news guy here. <laughs> Never trust the news guy. <laughs> so their job is to report what they know. <laughs> That's a great, great honor for Mr. Wilson. It there. Is, so yeah. we have a uh, editorial How's it assistant going, buddy? Alex Hello. Chope here with us, and uh, he's going to talk about some things that he's covered recently. Yeah, what do you have going on? I know that you're always out and about on the beat as well. Well, I, Pete wanted me to talk a little bit about the the Wellston Day of Prayer. Um, briefly and such which sure uh was went pretty well uh, i i think i went to the jackson one year before uh-huh. but uh, this was my first opportunity to go to the uh the uh, wellston one okay and such which mr i'm gonna butcher this name uh yadder in a check that's okay you're good okay. <laughs> i don't I didn't know then. yes okay i didn't then. good clean, job alex clean See? <laughs> Um, but yes, Mr. Yadernachek uh, was the organizer for that. And, okay. Uh, put together a wonderful service. Where was so, this held and, and when and did that, all this happen? Life Source uh, Apostolic Church in Wellston, real close to the fairgrounds. And such. Oh, they, okay. Yeah. I know where that's at. Yeah, they've got yeah, a real beautiful, nice, big yes, facility there. Yes, uh, big, large nave in the, uh, in the church and such. Just plenty of... Plenty of room for... Lots of people, huh? Yes. So tell Very us well what attended. happened, Alex. Well, you had several you had several people come on and give individual prayers. Like Sam Brady gave uh, the prayer for the economy. And so, oh, yeah, there's Mr. Yedernichek. Um, he looks passionate. He was very yes. passionate. But mo- most of it was. It was all a very, uh, very charged, uh, very charged ser- service. Um a lot of people coming together just to pray for the well-being of um, first responders, military, active personnel. Was there a common th- theme throughout, or did people have kind of their own, um, you know, groups that they wanted to to pray for? They each had individual groups, okay. and such, and it, it was in it was pretty much uh, it wasn't very uh, uniform. Or such like that. Most That's of them good, had though. most of them had lots of different messages. And uh, uh, Barry Benson, if I'm remembering right, spoke about uh, families and relationships. Um, okay. Um, like I said, Sam uh, talked about the economy. You had uh, the Prince. Whoa, I don't remember. Uh, Melissa. 
I can't remember the last name. Melissa talk. <laughs> Melissa, yes. Principal <laughs> Melissa. Um, uh, pray for those in education and things. Okay. Very nice. And you had special music. Uh, Lin Linda Dimel. I hope I pronounced that right. Dimel, Dimel. Uh, sang the national anthem and some special music. Oh, and lovely. Then you, you had various choirs come in. Oh, that's cool. Yes. But how long did the did it last? Seven to about nine, nine fifteen. Okay. So very good. What do you know about what do you guys know, um, being in the media and whatever, about this national day of prayer? You know, how did it get started? Anybody know anything about that? How long it's been going on? I unfortunately do not. Okay, I don't know either. <laughs> I, that would be interesting um, to, to look that up. I've reported on that in the past and past coverage that I've done, but off the top of my head, I couldn't tell you how okay. far back it dates. I know it dates back some time. I'm just glad, you know, it's it's in this world where everybody's telling everybody what they can and can't do, it's it's good to, to know that they're still able to, you know, have these celebrations and for everybody to congregate and, and have a good time there and... and you know, send some good juju out across oh, sure. the the masses. Sure, I mean they, they don't they don't pray for they don't pray for um, themselves while we're there. We all mm -hmm. they're all praying for others and the well being of others, especially those in um, less than favorable mm -hmm. positions. Um, it's kind of like manifesting um, the attitude and manifesting things to happen. You know, good much. to happen. Mm -hmm. So it started in 1952 by President Harry S. Truman. Okay. And he proclaimed the National Day of Prayer to be observed on July 4th. And it's happened each year since that date. On July 4th? That's what it says. That's I'm weird. Guessing, okay. I don't know if that's accurate. No. But, uh, Considering <laughs> it's not July, I don't think they, that's they accurate. May have, they may they have probably moved changed it. it. Yeah, to coincide with. But it's been happening every year since 1952. Wow, that's a long time, guys. I knew it dated back some time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize it had been that long. Okay. Yeah. And uh, we do have some more photos of uh, National Day of Prayer, but it's not from Wellston. We have Vinton County and Jackson. Okay. okay. Very good. You want to flip through them, Dylan? Yeah, Maybe we so can. So here's the Vinton County. Very good. I think uh, our Telegram staff editor, Red Thompson Jr., was up there to cover uh, the Vinton County happenings for the mm -hmm. National Day of Prayer. <laughs> They had the fortunate thing of having that right in the middle of the turkey festival, huh? They did, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, it looks like uh, everything went well with that. Yep, right up at the courthouse there. I believe he may have had some video coverage uh, on Facebook as well. Okay, this, cool. If anybody wants to go back and uh, watch that video. Sure, so you can tune in and, and check out all of those uh, messages as well. And here's Jackson. And here's some Jackson ones. There's Larry Foster. Yep, Larry Foster. Mm -hmm. Otherwise known as Jackson County Water Man. It looks okay. like the um, choir. The, yeah, is that the Jackson I, Choir? I think that's the Jackson Choir. Or is that Oak Hill? On that. Could be Oak. No, that's Oak Hill. I see Miss uh, Brittany Ruth there down front. So that's the um, Oak Hill High School okay. Choir there. She's the choir director. Very cool. So this is at the YMCA. I did go to this last year. Oh, here's Jackson. And there's the Jackson Choir. There's Jackson Choir. Okay. It's been regularly held at uh, Jackson YMCA for Jackson area YMCA. Has for, it? I think so. It what used a, to be held on the steps of the uh, Memorial Building mm -hmm, for a number mm -hmm. of years. I remember and at that. At the end, they would always unravel this big old American flag out in the street. It was always something to see. Aha! Uh -huh, that would be cool. So. Well, very good. So um, that's always something fun to look forward to every year, mm -hmm. and and cover that. It is. So I got a couple uh, upcoming events here that we could talk about. Okay. Um, coming up on uh, Alex. You can stay or you can you go, can stay buddy. Or you oh, can okay. Whatever you, whatever you want to do. do. <laughs> so um, okay. uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, May 9th, is the Community Wellness Day in Manpower Park. Okay. Tell us about that. I think you guys had uh, some folks in. Uh, they talked a little bit about this, or they touched on it, I believe. Um, it was at Sh Shannon Dalton mm -hmm. with the... Mm -hmm. um, Adam Board, mm -hmm. I believe. Mm -hmm. She touched on this whenever they were in and talked about the, um, they had that uh, event down in Rio. They did, the suicide prevention yes. event. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So this was the other event that they Hope mentioned. Fest. Yes. They mentioned briefly about this. So the uh, Community Wellness Day, it's sponsored in partnership with Integrated Services for Be Behavioral Health. 
and the Hopewell Health Center and the Gallia Jackson Meg Suicide Prevention Collaborative. It'll be held tomorrow, Tuesday, May 9th. The event's being held from 3 to 6 p.m. in Jackson's Manpower Park. And it says the Suicide Prevention Collaborative is proud to host a day focused on overall wellness, which includes mental, physical, and social aspects of health. A chalk walk will be held there at the park. Entertainment by our good friend DJ Rockin' Reggie. Mm -hmm. He always puts on a nice show. There will be resource table... There will be tables with resources available and activity stations will be featured as well. All residents of Jackson County are invited to attend this event. You know, and it's going to be an absolutely gorgeous day down at Manpower Park tomorrow. So get out and um, participate. And, you know, you never know. You may help yourself or someone else along the way just by stopping by, talking to some people. And this is a first time event for them. Love that. In the park. And I think they're going to try to make it maybe an annual. Thing. hope so it's um you know what they're doing is wonderful and so many of us do need help out there and need to maybe need someone to talk to or whatever and you know this is maybe that perfect opportunity right so mm. uh go ahead no, no no i was gonna say i went up to the hope fest oh you did, did? Yeah. i did it was like the third one yeah and such. Um, at raya talk a little mm-hmm. bit about that yeah I, 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 I can talk a little bit about it okay. um but yeah this is seems like it's gonna be more a lot of Along the lines of the same thing. Um, Did they have a good turnout there? Was it looked like a good turnout? Good. Um, I yeah, was they held for, it inside, didn't mm-hmm. they? Yeah, the it line was center, a, I think. The, the yes. weather was not cooperating. Uh-oh. No, no, it was kind of <laughs> dark and dreary. Yeah, it was. So it was we, not we all good. stuck it inside, but um, it was. It was. It was a very nice event. Um, they all. They they definitely wanted to draw the point of mm-hmm. that there are resources in the community. Tons of resources. Yes, lots, especially around here. Um, but there are lots and lots of resources in the community for people to get help. And yes. These events really shine a light on that. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and it may not be for yourself. It may be that you go and, and realize that, you know, you have a family member or a best friend or, or somebody that you work with, a coworker that, you know, maybe you can help them along the way as well. Yes. I mean, for, I mean, it's just as important to, to know how to, um, speak and treat other people who yes. may be dealing with something that you may not be dealing with. Right. Very important. You know, that empathy, I yes. kind of try to preach empathy, but it's the truth. You know, if we yes. all had more empathy in the world, we'd probably have world peace and whatnot. You know, it's just, we're all selfish creatures by nature. I feel like sometimes. And, um, if you just maybe learn how someone else is feeling, uh, then you can understand them a little bit better too. Absolutely. Yep. So I have a couple other community events we could touch on just as we yeah. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, Alex. Take care, guys. Yes. You Thank are you for relieved. stopping Thank in. Thank you. You may. We appreciate it. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much. <laughs> if you see Phil, send him our way. I will. Okay. So um, a couple other events here that uh, I have that we could talk about. Okay. Um, the Jackson First Church of the Nazarene, located at 251 Powell Drive, will host its monthly free breakfast for veterans. That's coming up on Love Saturday, that. May 20th at 9 a.m. And the breakfast is held in the church's gym. This breakfast is open to all military veterans, active military personnel, and their families. And that breakfast is always held monthly on the third Saturday of each month. And they do that every month throughout the year. That is so awesome. Yes. It's so appropriate. They always have a good good turnout for that. Um, actually, what a good place. What a good venue for it that. Is, it yeah. is. I, uh, I attend that church, and it's always nice to go mm-hmm. and see all the folks that um, come to that. And then they always have a good group of folks back in the kitchen preparing. Usually they have like sausage, gravy, and biscuits. And yes. All kinds of different all the stuff, good stuff for them to eat out there. Um, a couple of other events coming up uh, at the Oak Hill Public Library, they will be hosting Dr. Jonathan uh, ba- Ballin, Ballin, and he will be there on Thursday, May 25th at 6 p.m., and he will be doing a program called Ancient People in the Oak Hill Area, <laughs> and the uh, program is in honor of the late James Hugh Hughes Lloyd, uh, who was a trustee at the Oak Hill Public Library. Okay. Uh, the event is being held in conjunction with the Village of Oak Hills Sesquicentennial. How about Everybody that? Everybody give him a standing ovation. I feel, I feel like that was pretty good. 
We got it. He got it. You're gonna have to make you're gonna have to make a TikTok on this one now, Dylan. I will. <laughs> Finally got it without butchering it too bad there. So um, that's a 150th anniversary celebration there in the village of Oak Hill, and in addition to um, the presentation that he will be doing as a slideshow, there will also be a hands-on session with ancient artifacts, including arrowheads from the area. Uh, the event is cool. free and open to the public, and uh, all are welcome to attend. Very good. Let's see if we got any other ancient. The on. the I, I laughed. It just sounded like ancient people. Ancient, <laughs> ancient people, people in the Oak Hill area. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's so, all relative, I guess. Yeah. Uh, another event coming up later this <laughs> month. You have the Oak Hill Boys Basketball Golf Scramble. Mm -hmm. It'll be held on Saturday, May 27th at Franklin Valley Golf Club. Uh, there will be a shotgun start at 8 a.m. The cost is $240 per four-person team. Okay. And um, it says there will be a 50-50 raffle, skills, prizes, food will be served all day. And they have some different sponsorships available as well. It says to sign up a team and to sponsor a whole, you can call or text Heath McKinnis at 740-709-1378. Every time they say shotgun start, I have shotgun I feel like start. I feel like we need to explain that. <laughs> I don't know. I like can you are... explain that? I can't explain. What is yeah, a yeah. Start? So basically, um, a shotgun start is that each team starts on a different hole. So um that way everybody starts at the same time. Gotcha. So it's not like... That way you're not waiting in line. Right. Like you're waiting in like line the at the putt-putt course. The first team goes and then the... Yeah. So it's like, you know, team two may start on hole three, you know, that kind of thing. And so everybody... And then you just go around. That way everybody starts at once. Okay. Yeah. I, I've never actually played golf. The closest thing I've played to golf is putt-putt. So. Yeah, me too. But I <laughs> but, do know that part. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh... Trying to look see if there's anything else coming up here. Do you have anything you want to? Do you got anything in your stack, Jim? No. Well, What's, no. What, I don't know what. 150th the... here. I know there's it some is, stuff there coming a, up. Wait, say it again. The sesquicentennial. <laughs> that the first time was better. I messed You're not that one get up. A standing ovation for that. Yeah, one. that one was bad. <laughs> we we already talked about the um. We already talked about the presentation at the library, but on May 28th, they will be doing a bluegrass night honoring Oak Hill at the Festival of Flags. Yes. So that's our next festival coming up Memorial Day weekend, and they have released a schedule for that. So we will be getting news out regarding that festival okay. here soon. Now, yeah, and once just, we get this one put to bed. Yeah, right. And check out <laughs> Facebook. Check out, you know, all of the, the things because Festival of Flags, if you've never taken the drive down to Oak Hill, um, for the festival of flags, it is absolutely breathtaking down there. Um, they line the streets with the flags and it's just such a fun uh, festival to attend. And they always have great entertainment and um, it's just a really, really good time over Memorial day weekend. So there's plenty to do and some good food along the way too. Yes. And uh, speaking of Oak Hill, the Oak Hill Chamber of Commerce is still taking donations for their special unveiling at Central Memorial Park. We now know that that unveiling is the world's largest egg corn. Come on, people. Get the money out of your wallet. Let the butterflies go and contribute to the world's largest acorn. Yes. They uh, they made a post a couple <laughs> days ago on their Facebook page. It's the Oak Hill Area Chamber of Commerce. And they are, say they're excited about this project. It's the world's largest acorn project. And they envision the world's largest acorn being a permanent reminder of Oak Hill's 150th anniversary. And they're um, working with a local business, Romar Metal Fabrication, mm -hmm. to design and build the world's largest acorn. And I'm actually going down there for a chamber meeting today. I want you to find out how large will the world's will be, largest acorn hopefully be. Hopefully they'll have some more details. I know yes. last month when I was there... They said that they were hoping at this meeting they would have a um, small design of what this acorn is going to look like. So Very hopefully cool. I can get a picture of that and bring it back to show you guys. Do you think that they'll have the world's largest squirrels there as well? I don't know. They're like, oh, this giant acorn. Giant acorn. That's right. But uh, if you're interested in um, donating. How do you donate? Yeah, I, yeah you can. Uh, let's see. 
they they have a donation form available on their on their Facebook page, if you just get on there. Is that the Oak Hill Chamber of Commerce? Oak Hill Chamber okay. of Commerce, and it tells you on there where you can mail this form along with uh, your money or checks. Okay. And um, it goes into detail. You can even um, put what you want. I, I guess you can like um, like put your name. Uh, they're going to do like a plaque at the end. Yeah, like of a all the like donations. a thankful like yeah, a donation that's awesome. plaque. So you can make sure you include that in there. It says, "I would like the donor board to recognize my donation as." And you can say, you know, in memory of, or you can say, mm -hmm. you know, your business name or whatever, church, etc. So there you go. Um, be sure to get on there and check out check that out. I know they're really pushing to try to get that done, um, but they're wanting to do the unveiling on November fourth. Okay, so, world's largest acorn. We got to get her done, man. The acorn will fall in November there. So. <laughs> hopefully. Hopefully. So, anyhow, right. hopefully that was okay for uh, winging it with the surprise here. Yes, and, but no, uh, congratulations to our good friend Marvin, uh, <laughs> a.k.a. Pete Wilson, for being selected as a Kentucky Colonel. Yes. Um, thank you to everybody that came in for the presentation, and uh, I know that, that he is very honored. He... He was very surprised. He's very surprised. I thought we did a really good he job. Was, he was getting a little red in the face. Yeah. There. <laughs> you don't. Well, you know, it's like when the tables turn, you know, because he's always the one giving out the yes. accolades and doing all of the reporting on good things. But when it comes back to him, he doesn't know how to deal with that it very was well. Very, very well done. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Got him good. Yes, we did. Gotta love that here. <laughs> so, all right. Well, Jeremiah, thank you for spending uh, the morning with us. We greatly, greatly appreciate it. And um, so, tomorrow we have. Nothing. What do we have, James? He's running. Community day. Community day. Is that what we were just talking about? Uh, maybe. Maybe. Yeah, the I think community it is. wellness. Yep. Could be. So, all right, cool. Well, we will be back tomorrow. Fill you in on some great things going on here locally, and we'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs> This just in. The Telegram News has a new website. TheTelegramNews.com Same dedicated coverage. Same trustworthy news with a brand new look. Covering Jackson and Benton County and surrounding areas. Locally owned and operated, TheTelegramNews.com has its finger on the pulse of the community. Stay up to date on local events, high school sports, and breaking news. TheTelegramNews.com Subscribe today at TheTelegramNews.com Check it out.